Well, welcome everyone. And thank you to Brian and Kelly E and Mark for um, sharing their um, dishes that you can make from your pantry. Um, we, today we'll be starting off with Brian Hieda. And um, Brian videoed um, his, his, um, his demonstration, but he will be here to answer any questions that you might have. So you can either pose your questions in the chat box or you can ask the question <coughs> after the, uh, we play the video. So let's get going. Hello everybody, my name is Brian Hieda and I am with the UHMC IT department. Hey Joyce, I think it went muted. Hello everybody, my name is Brian Yetta and I am with the UHMC IT department and today I'll be doing something a little bit different. I'll be demonstrating how to make refried beans in an instant pot. Now the thing that makes this recipe a little unique is the fact that there is no soaking of the beans and also there's no frying of the beans. So this deviates a little bit from the traditional refried bean recipe and is a little healthier and a lot less time consuming. So let's get started. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the ingredients before we get started with cooking. I've prepped them ahead of time. Uh, the first thing we have is a pound and a half of dried pinto beans. I've uh, gone through this, I've rinsed them, made sure they're clean, they haven't been soaked. They're just fresh out of the bag. Um, then we have two potatoes that cut up a little earlier. They're already running, but that's not going to be a problem. Um, there's two potatoes that I kind of dice them up real small. Um, then I have two onions as well that is diced up. I have two jalap jalapenos, jalapenos, two jalapenos that are diced up nice and small. And for the drying, oh, then we have um, eight of the garlic's mints, and I use a mincer to, uh, a press mincer, to get this type of uh, consistency. I guess you could do whatever you want for that. And for the dry stuff, Oops, I got onion in there. This is the seasonings, and it consists of two and a half tablespoons of kosher salt, two tablespoons or two teaspoons of cumin, heaping te teaspoons of cumin, two heaping teaspoons of dried oregano, and I didn't really have that, so I just put what I had, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And then for the liquids, we have, it's going to be five cups of water, which is this a four cup, so one full and one cup, uh, and six cups of chicken stock or vegetable stock. And since this uh, pandemic has happened, I've been using this I got from Amazon. It's broth-based seasoning and seasoning, and it's just powder form, and it... You can use two teaspoons of this to equal one cup of broth. So I have 12 teaspoons, which is six, that I need to add six cups of water to this. So in total, we're going to have 11 cups of water. And this is going to simulate, when we throw this in, the six going to turn into six cups of, um, uh, this is chicken, chicken stock. So it makes it pretty good stuff too. It actually tastes, it doesn't taste that bad. Okay, time to get started with the cooking. I have a six quart instant pot here that's been preheating on the saute mode. It is nice and hot, so we are ready to start. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, about two tablespoons or so, one to two tablespoons. Then I'm going to add in the onions and potatoes 
and jalapeno. And there's really no specific order to go in here. Um, in fact, you probably don't even really need to do that. You could probably just um, throw everything in, um, all this stuff in, and not even saute it. Uh, this is just an uh, extra step that I do to try to bring the flavor out of the onions and jalapenos uh, before it, uh, all the other ingredients uh, get put in. Once all the ingredients are in there, I'm going to start to stir it well. I'm just trying to combine everything and avoid the bottom from burning um, as the, the saute mode is pretty hot. Now, we're not trying to cook any of this stuff. We're just trying to heat it up and get it uh, aromatic and uh, release some of the, the flavors and smells. And um, it probably takes a, a minute or two for that to happen. And you'll notice that if you leave it too long, it's going to start burning and sticking to the bottom. And, and still, that's not a problem because uh, we'll just deglaze it in the next step by adding some liquid. I'm just going to add four cups. We have five cups of water. There's four cups, I'm going to add two more. This will give us the, the amount of water for the broth. So this is about six cups of water. This is going to be full. So it works. Add my teaspoons of my uh, base powder. So now it's, we have six cups of broth in there. Add uh, five cups of water. And, oh, my skin. I almost forgot that. A total, a total of um, 11 cups of liquid in here. And then all the So we're going to take us a pretty cool reason, but it's a little bit above the max, I believe. It's going to, the beans will expand, but they absorb the liquid, so it, it doesn't overflow. That's it. So now, I scrape off the, the burnt stuff on the bottom. So I'm going to close the lid, seal it, where it's on seal, which is that side. I'm going to hit cancel because it's on saute. And let's see. Cook on manual high. Okay, I'm going to hit manual high to 45 minutes. And that should take us to where we need to be. All right, so I'm going to depressurize it. It's been 45 minutes, a little more. Um, this thing is still under pressure, I can tell, because of this, this little pin right here. That will let out steam if, it, if it's up. And it, it's, that's what basically locked it. So I'm going to put this over because it gets water over everything. So I'm just going to flip that open like that. Let it kind of come out like that. Maybe not water, but water vapor. Depressurization takes some time, probably five to eight minutes. So I sped this portion up. And also, as you see, I've developed a few cheats to make this go on faster. Now, that's probably not safe. So I'd recommend you just naturally let the pressure release. And you'll know what it's done when the pen drops on the lid. Like so, it just dropped right there. So it's now ready to be opened. It's very hot. And very full. There it is. Full to the brim. I'm going to do is 
reserve about two cups of this. something like that and uh, oh. and a masher like a potato masher and you can just start mashing this a little bit to you get your desired thickness or thickness. It, look, it really looks um, liquidy right now, but <clears throat> and even more so now with this. But it thickens up as a uh, when you put it in the refrigerator and save it because it's a lot of it's a lot of beans so this lasts quite a bit of time i've uh, frozen this um in little bunches so i just defrost what i'm you know use that amount that I freeze. So, like freezer bags or ziploc um cellophane um and yeah that's about it this is That is done. All right, now um, Brian is here. So if you have any questions for Brian, please unmute yourself and uh, ask Brian the question directly. Um, Brian, there's a question about um, doing the same thing in a crock pot. Is that, um, um, can she do that? Use a crock pot instead of the Instapot? Brian? I see that you're unmuted. I well, we can't hear you. Mom, I'm pooping. That's it. Okay. Ryan, can we hear you now? No? Okay, well, maybe we can um, answer that um, um, by chat. Any other questions, anyone? Angela, you have a question? OK, 
Okay, well, if not, um, Kelly E. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you, thanks. Okay, welcome to my cooking show, bro. Okay, it's nine o'clock in the morning, it's super early for curry, so that's what we're gonna make today. Okay, um, so in the recipe you guys got, or in the, in the RCP, you have a recipe called uh, Thai Peanut Butter Pantry Curry. This is a play on um, saute peanut sauce and Thai uh, red style curry. I don't quite know what they are, but mainly the, um, the thing that makes this the Thai curry is this particular jar right here. You guys able to see that? Okay. This comes in different types of um, heat, I guess. This is a red curry paste. I think there's also a yellow curry paste. This is sort of your, this is what makes it Thai, okay? Um, I have a couple ingredients on the table here. I'll show you guys. The real thing about any kind of Asian style cooking is it's supposed to be really fast. So you have like your heat, you have to feed a lot of people. Um, you know, like one pot meals, of course, yeah. So this is going to be an example of like a one pot, um, 20 minute, less than 20 minute kind of meal. So it'll be kind of depending on what protein you use. So within my recipe, we have, you know, the Asian style flavors are um, savory. Um, we got salty. This right here is the um, fish sauce that I might be using. If you guys want to do a vegan version, this is optional. This just adds a little bit more of a... Um, um, it has, if you guys have any kind of like balays, like pickled vegetables, some, I think they have like a little dressing they have. So this is the, usually the base they have that they make with that dressing. This is um, a Lucky Brand fish sauce. Any questions about that? Can you guys see? Should I bring it closer? Okay. Oh, that's the English side. Um, the other ingredients we're going to have is coconut milk. So a part of most curries is to have some sort of coconut milk, which is the fat that takes all the curry spices, it blends it all together, and they all become this one unified flavor profile. Um, I'm using fancy words this morning. So we've got the coconut milk. The one thing about coconut milk that I discovered when you go to the store is that you got the cheap coconut milk. So you're gonna make chichidango, you're gonna make any kind of thing that really needs some coconut milk. There's this can, if you guys can see, it's called uh, Chef's Choice. Not, not saying it's a bad product. I'm just saying that if you look at the ingredients, though it says, you know, this does include fresh milk from fresh coconuts, but if you look at the first ingredient, and you know, you look at the ingredients to be healthy, the first ingredient is coconut extract. So I'm thinking this is really just a flavored water with some coconut protein in it. But you can tell the difference between real coconut milk and a coconut extract is. A coconut extract would be very um, homogenous. It won't have any floaty bits. You want to have, um, you're not going to have any kind of like um, layer where you got to mix it. So coconut milk that's made from extract usually just has a flavor in it, some sort of color and a stabilizer so it, so it doesn't come out of that um, solution when it's in a can. But good coconut milk, you'll know, has a bit of fat that solidifies around the rim. I don't know if you can see that. Are you guys able to see that? I can't, I can't tell. Can I get a verbal yeah, confirmation? We can see, see it. We can see it. So this is how to tell really good coconut milk. I'm going to take a little bit longer on the coconut milk because the coconut milk is kind of the thing that ruins the flavor for me. If you have a really junk coconut milk, you'll taste kind of like a, um, almost like a dessert kind of, sweetness to it almost artificial which could be a, you know due to the processing of you know coconut extract so this one in the store this was on sale for $1.29 at tomorrow's this one was on sale for two dollars and about 40 cents or something the the coconut milk inside says you know first ingredient is coconut milk and the next ingredient is water some other chemicals in there but that's just for stabilizers and preservatives but mainly you want to get the good stuff some of the good stuff also you can get is from the frozen section. Okay, um, you got this, and then we got our, our flavor that we're gonna build up. So the complimentary flavor we got is the peanut butter we're gonna use. This particular peanut butter is really good because it has some sugar already in it, and it has the chunky bits of peanut butter. So 
this is my particular favorite natural. There's nothing natural about peanut butter in a jar, just making sure that natural doesn't mean anything. So here's all the chunkiness of the peanut butter. What I like about the chunky peanut butter for this particular recipe is that the, the peanuts, are, they get really soft and, and sort, of, um, sort of meaty, but little chunks of different texture in, in your recipe. So, but the peanut butter is, is what makes the peanut butter curry pantry peanut butter. Um, for, if you want to go pure vegan style, I recommend using a tofu, but I recommend getting a tofu that is firm, extra firm, because you're going to be making a curry that's going to absorb a lot of flavors. The meat's going to absorb a lot of flavors. So you're going to have a tofu that's going to suck up all that moisture from the curry and it's going to take in all that taste. Okay. And then you, of course you got your, your bag of frozen vegetables, any good old bag of frozen vegetables. This one was on sale at Safeway. I think it was like two dollars for uh, or four dollars for two. So I bought two bags. This one's got the you know like the Chinese vegetables inside and different colors. So just pick any kind of frozen vegetable. Um, now back down to the texture side of things. So a lot of those like the spices and things are just texture. I'm talking a lot because this cooks really fast, so I need to have some filler. So anyways, this is your vegetables, of course. It's got texture. You've got um, water chestnuts. I don't know if you guys know what water chestnuts are. Um, they come in a can, I think. I'm not sure how they grow. Then you got your bamboo shoots. So the important thing about bamboo shoots is it really stinks when you take it out of the can. Do not use the water. I drain each of these things before I actually put it into any sauce because that, that fart smell you get from canned vegetables, it'll kind of put the, the food off. So that's why a lot of people don't like canned vegetables because of that kind of sulfur smell so a lot so what do we do is we just rinse this okay um you can see down here these are some of the additional flavor profiles this is the the the, the paste this is minced garlic this is a lime uh this is a lime i bought from the store just for comparison are you able to see that So, but it's really good having a neighbor so you can go steal their limes. So this is the Kalamanti limes that I stole from the neighbor's house. Okay, so I'm gonna get cooking. Uh, so in this particular recipe, because it cooks really fast, you, you cook things in a certain order. But of course, in Asian style cooking, you gotta, you gotta get everything ready to go in tray. So this amount of planning for you guys was a lot for me. <laughs> you got your fire, turn on your burner, uh, medium, high heat, maybe like not too hot, enough where, you know, the, um, the oil, when, once you put it in, it'll start smoking a little bit, but you don't want to burn things. So um, once this heats up, you're going to be able to figure out what's the first thing you want to do with the curry. Make sure your burner's on and don't burn yourself. Okay, uh, any questions so far while we wait for the pan to heat up? Can't see if there's any chat questions. Okay, well, if there's any questions, just uh, go ahead and free to stop me. Okay, um, we're heating up the pan, letting it heat up. I've got an oil that I'm gonna start with as my, um, my, my fry to start with the base. So in this particular recipe, I've got two actual proteins. I have tofu. This is the extra firm tofu that I have. Um, this is that um, container brand that is like this. This is about a, and sometimes it's on sale for like $2. This is good stuff. And I had, do have my protein also, my chicken. So um, I had a personal request to kind of make two separate ones. And this is kind of what I would do if I had um, a, a family members that one doesn't eat chicken, but one does um, tofu. So we can kind of build upon the chicken, build upon the tofu, then the chicken uh, version of this curry without changing pots. Okay. Woo. Breathe. All right. Put some oil in the pan. 
move my computer away from the fire so it's gonna melt. Okay. Got it heating up. All right, so this is my coconut milk that I have here. The first two things you're gonna start with is you got your oil in the pan, any kind of oil. Um, you might wanna not use olive oil because the thing with eight, um, this particular dish, there's so many flavors that if you add something that has a strong flavor like olive oil, it'll probably try and compete with a lot of those different flavors. So it'll, it might not come out well. So I just use a regular you know, canola or whatever oil to get my thing started. Uh, first thing, okay, so we're gonna add in the tofu. So the tofu we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of the curry paste. So in total, you'll probably be using like three tablespoons of this curry paste, but that's because I kind of like want to marinate and fry the tofu with the curry paste to add a little bit kick on the surface of the tofu. And I think the recipe just says on the bottle of the, the spices that you just um, put in the, put in your um, proteins, you, you give them a little bit of a stir, then you add in the coconut milk, then you add in the spice. But because I think tofu is so bland, you need that little bit extra bit of salt, I mean, of flavor on the tofu that doesn't really get through it, you just let it soak. Okay, so we put that in there. All right, next thing is we're gonna put our coconut milk. Okay, got the coconut milk in there. And it's just gonna kind of simmer. You don't want it to overboil because the it's the um you might burn the, the fat in the coconut milk. So you just kind of want to bring it to just a simmer. And then you just kind of smell it. You can smell the, the flavors of the different um, curry, pastes, curry, curry paste, paste, curry paste spices. And you can just kind of smell it blending together. You smell the coconut kind of melting a little bit. Okay. Once it looks good. So this curry won't be a bright red curry, even though like the paste itself is super red. It's not gonna be a bright red. It's gonna be kind of like, um, almost like an orange color. But what I do notice is that because I probably use the curry in multiple stages throughout this cooking process, you might have to put a little bit more just to kind of get curry flavor. But there's a little bit of a secret I'll show you guys. All right, um, next thing is we're still with the base. This is the curry base. We got your peanut butter. now. I put a lot of peanut butter in here, so it looks like it's peanut butter and not something else. So I'm gonna put peanut butter in a little bit at a time. And don't be afraid just to kind of go in there and just taste it because this peanut butter has sugar in it, so I'm not gonna add any additional sugar like honey, um, brown sugar. But if you don't have peanut butter that is sweet or has some sort of salt in it, then you're gonna to wanna to kind of add a little bit more of a um, sugar, some kind of sugar to, to bring all that flavor together okay that's still going that's good. so it's going pretty quick i don't know if you can see that it's really bubbly i'm going to add my vegetables in now that's going to bring the temperature down right now you got to remember that the um the, the canned vegetables they're all cooked already so mainly what you're doing is you're kind of just heating it up so at this point you just dump everything in okay uh water chestnuts people don't really like water chestnuts because of texture but if you rinse it it'll get people to like it And then you should always have like somebody to help you clean the kitchen while you cook. I can't even hear what they're saying. <laughs> okay, uh, are you guys are you guys good? Okay, cool. All right, so we, we're stirring the curry. We're gonna let it kind of bring back up the temperature because the vegetables were, were frozen, right? Now, 
sometimes your curry because you're using like a really thick coconut curry coconut coconut milk it'll get a little too thick too soon so you want to add the rest of the coconut milk because that can add a lot of milk in it and then you want to add a little bit more of just water to thin it down okay uh the cameraman adam here is going to bring it in closer for an overview shot Okay, you can see it's it's coming up to temperature again because the vegetables are frozen and it's really about timing. So you don't want to get the vegetables out because you want the residual heat of the curry to come back to heat to be able to then cook them and not overcook them. So the goal here is to have all the different textures, okay? Not to overcook anything, not to make things too mushy or whatnot, okay? So this particular vegetable has snow peas, long beans, uh, broccoli, it does have some water chestnuts. It has some snow peas and broccoli and red bell pepper and carrots. So this medley itself, you didn't have to chop it up. Go get the frozen one, put it in the bag, put it in when you're ready, bring it up in temperature, it'll melt all together. This tastes, the taste is. <laughs> all right, don't forget, taste. Taste the curry. Okay. Could use more curry. So remember that first tablespoon is what I use to marinate the tofu. So you don't want to do more than the three total tablespoons because it'll become bitter. Then you're always fighting to balance that bitterness with something sweet, then it just gets overwhelming. So now you put the rest of your curry in here once you've got your, your sauce going. So um, if you could kind of see, yeah, it was kind of, it's not bright red, it's a bit of an orange color. Uh, right now, you see, I haven't added any salt, okay? So in a little bit, we're going to add the fish sauce. So this is the optional ingredient if you want to go make it, make it um, not as um, pure, purely vegan, because this particular jar of spices, this is sold as a vegan item. So if you want to be able to make it completely vegan, you can omit the fish sauce. But I do find that the fish sauce adds that next level of um, salty butt bitterness, but that kind of umami flavor you're kind of looking for with um, Asian taste. So I got a little bit here in this pan, in this little thing. I'm gonna just kind of sprinkle it over. And what you're really looking for is sort of like a, a, a smell where the fishiness starts meeting the cream and the coconut and the curry. Once you smell like something is too fishy, you put too much. Okay, so you just wanna do a little bit of time because this stuff is concentrated and salty. Always grab a new spoon. Don't use the same spoon if you're serving for other people. You got to taste. Okay, good. It's building up the salt, so I love it more. I could probably put this whole thing in here. So that was probably, uh, a, I think, uh, two tablespoons of sauce in that little of fish sauce. Okay. Now, the sweetness isn't coming out for me at this point. There is a lot of sugar in this particular one. It says, you know, roasted in peanuts, sugar, and palm oil. So because this has some oil in it and the peanuts will also thicken the, the, um, the sauce, I'm going to actually go in with the, the brown sugar. And with Asian-style cooking, it's always like you put a little bit, you taste, you put a little bit, you taste. And if it's good, then you stop. But that's always the problem with Asian-style cooking is the way I cook it might be different than how somebody else cook it, cooks their food, you know? And you, just a little bit of brown sugar, any kind of like sugar will help to really blend the additional flavors together. My mom's gonna be so mad. There's so much dishes piling up in the sink right now. Okay, good. That was perfect. That was, that was almost going to be too much of that. Okay. Now you bring it down to a low simmer. And you don't want to overcook your vegetables because you can tell now your, um, your frozen vegetables have already come up to the steam point. They're not mushy. They're still crunchy. So what I like about this particular style of um, cooking with frozen vegetables is that you end up having different textures even when it's like leftovers 
So A, it's going to be fresh. It's going to be crispy. It's going to be ready to eat. But it's going to be a lot because it, it does have a lot of coconut milk in it. So because that's kind of heavy, you can always eat a little bit and you're going to have your rice. Okay. Um, you want to have the final balance before you serve it to have the acid. So at this point, we didn't have any acids that we put in. This is where the limes come in. Um, so like I said earlier, the limes I got, this is like a 70 cents at the store. But walking around the neighborhood, my, my neighbor's got a, um, a calamansi tree that's just growing on the side of the road. So I picked a couple of calamansi, which is a different kind of flavor. It's not a very lime flavor, but it's good. And then you get a little fork, and the kind of thing is you just poke it a little bit, and then you just squeeze it over. So I'm going to just put it straight in the pop up. Normally, you want to do this, have a little bit of a wedge lime um, in, in like a small little bowl to serve with this. So it's sort of like the soy sauce if you want to add more salt. Um, sometimes they'll have like, you know, an extra bit of fish sauce oil if there's not enough salt in it. And you just, you know, you just go through and just squeeze the lime over it. Um, I find that if you put the lime while it's boiling, the lime will end up tasting like soap because of the coconut milk. I don't know if that's the chemical reaction that's happening, but I recommend when you're serving it, when it's still hot, squeeze the lime over it. If you've got, you know, if it's a small little thing like that, you could probably just kind of put it in there. And then there you go, you're done. You grab a dish. Make more dishes for your mom. And there you go. I hope this tastes good. <laughs> All right. Adam, cameraman, how does it smell? Amazing. Do you smell the, the lime? Do. Do you smell the coconut and the spices? Absolutely. Um, do you smell the peanut butter? Correct. Okay. So that's it. Um, I don't know how long that was. I don't know if anybody was timing me, but we just made uh, Thai style peanut butter pantry curry in, um, I don't know, 20 minutes, maybe faster if I didn't talk so much. Okay, there you go. So the chicken, the chicken option, same time when you do the tofu like I did, you put the, you put the, um, the spices a little bit in the oil, you, you, um, you saute it a little bit. So same thing with the tofu, the same time you would put the chicken, okay? Um, same exact base, same process, add as much as you want till you get to that flavor. Now, um, when, if I send you guys the recipe, it's not going to have measurements. It's going to say what you put in it because sometimes you're not going to have a big enough pot. You're not going to have, um, a fan of the textures or you have maybe a large bag of different types of vegetables that aren't. Sure. So it's really like, these are sort of what the basics are to make this kind of dish. And if you want more salty, add that. If you want more sugar, add that. If you want more peanut, add, add the peanut butter. Some of the things they do too is they, you know, they sprinkle uh, roasted peanut butter, peanuts on the top just for, you know, decoration. Okay. All right. That's it. Kaylee's Cookie Show. Kitchen's done. Thank you. <laughs> Woo. Any questions? Thank, Thank you, Kaylee. There's a question for you about how do you make it spicier? Which ingredient would you add? Right, okay. So in my house, my background, I'm Korean. So in my house, we have a particular Korean type of spice called kochukaru. So um, I'm going to see how fine this particular one is. Okay. If you breathe into this, yeah, this stuff is really hot. It's going to tickle. So. This add in afterwards if you wanted to make it more hot. Add this. The um, the the curry bottle. It says it says it's you know red and it's got three chili peppers on it, but it's really not that hot considering you know how much um hot food I do already eat. So you know any kind of chili pepper like this. But what's good about these kind of, the Korean chili peppers is it doesn't add a chili pepper flavor like you know like if you have like jalapenos. Jalapenos kind of have a taste, right? Um, if you put in any kind of like Hawaiian chili peppers or something, they kind of have a taste, right? So you want to be able to put something that'll add the heat, but not the flavor, because you want to control the flavor balance. Um, the main thing with Asian cooking is the flavor balance and texture. So you need to be able to have 
salty, sweet, bitter, umami, umami flavor, which is the, that kind of um, uh, soup stock flavor, the fish taste, the meat taste. Um, and there's another one. I forget. Sour. So the sour with the lemon. Um, and I did notice that, you know, like with Thai cooking, it's a very balanced approach to all those kind of points on your tongue. And then you add the heat for sweat. Okay. Any, any other questions? Okay, so Nathan, thank she's not you, Korean, Kelly. but she loves her some hot, spicy Korean heat. Well, girl, <laughs> this blows out anything out of your body. Anything you need to get rid of, you, you take a, a spoonful of this, put it in your chili. Woo! Yes, I have that. Burns going in, burns going out. <laughs> so um, next up is um, Mark. And... Um, Kelly and Brian are, are still here, so the, um, if you have any questions for them after uh, Mark, then um, um, you, can ask, you can pose your questions then. So I will share my screen again. starts boiling, you can reduce the heat and kind of let it go to a low rolling boil. We'll let that boil for seven to ten minutes and while we're waiting we'll check out survival tip number one. If you don't have it already, I highly suggest Netflix and there's a show called Ozark. You gotta check it out. We just kept our heads down one day. There's nothing we can do about that now. We're committed. Oh yeah? We have made promises to our shareholders about this casino and I don't think we want to annoy our shareholders. I want you to admit something. I want you to admit this is all about you. For what's best for us. And you let be yourself. What do you want? Okay, back to cooking. It looks like the water is just about all but evaporated. It would be about good time at this point to take it off the stove and let it cool down. I should mention it's very important to stay hydrated while you're cooking, and that takes me to survival tip number two, and that is make sure that your wine fridge is always fully stocked. Now let's start with prepping all the ingredients. Basically, we'll peel the cucumber, and then we're going to cut it in half lengthwise. And in fact, there's a lot of different ingredients you can use in this recipe. These are just a few of my favorites. Um, I actually like to take out the seeds for this particular recipe. And once you do that, basically what you're going to do is going to slice them lengthwise again, and then chop them up into chunks and add them into the large bowl. Next up, we have the red cabbage, and here's my favorite kitchen gadget. It makes slicing things thin very easily. Just be careful with your fingers. And once you have it all sliced up, just add the red cabbage to the bowl. And then next, we're going to grab a clove of garlic and just smash it with a knife. It helps uh, make the, the skin come off a little easier. Then I like to mince up the garlic. And a little trick that my dad taught me back in the day was that you, you just add a little bit of salt to the garlic. It kind of helps release the flavor. But if you can just kind of take the side of your knife and just swoosh in the salt and the garlic together, it really enhances the flavor. Once you're finished with the garlic, you can add it to the little bowl. And then you can grab the half a red onion and start to dice the onion. Now, very important, as I mentioned, you really need to stay hydrated. 
You can add the onion to the larger bowl, and next up will be the red bell pepper. What I like to do is just kind of basically put it down the middle, and then I like to take out the stock parts and just kind of cut on a V angle and bake that away. If you want, you can take out the seeds inside, and then basically we're going to chop the red bell pepper. Next up, we have the parsley. I typically like to take off the stalks and just keep the top parts of the parsley. And then what I'm going to do, I don't like it too fine, so I'm going to chop it a little bit coarse. Okay, now we'll add the chickpeas or garbanzo beans into the large bowl. And then we're going to take the lemon juicer and actually, you can use lemon or lime. I have a lime tree, so I'm going to use some fresh lime from my tree. Okay, now we'll take the olive oil, add that to the small bowl with the lemon and the garlic. And then we'll also take the red wine vinegar, about two tablespoons, add that to the small bowl in a liquid mixture. Now I'd like to add some salt. You know, you can always add more salt later, so it's good not to over salt in the beginning. So I'll just do about a, a teaspoon of salt. This is actually just a really simple recipe, and we're basically almost ready. So we just gotta check, make sure the quinoa is uh, room temperature. You don't want it to be too hot. It can be okay if it's a little warm. Add that to the large bowl. And basically, then you're gonna disc the liquid and add that in. Make sure you stay hydrated yourself. And then we're going to basically, um, we're gonna just mix into the large bowl until you evenly distribute all the ingredients. At this point, it's vegan, but if you like to add a little extra creaminess to the dish, I like to put a little bit of goat cheese in there. And it adds a little extra component of flavor. And top it off with a little bit of fresh ground pepper, uh, seasoned to taste. Of course, you gotta stay hydrated. <sighs> And now we just mix that up and we're basically done. Serve it into a bowl um, and there you go. Simple as that. Cheers. I should mention if you put it in the refrigerator for a few hours, it gets even better. Here, here, have a taste. Tell me what you think. All right, hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna have a little myself. And that leaves me with survival tip number three, and that's how to lose weight during our isolationism. Yeah, not looking good. So I just get my trusty friend here, the chair, just get it right up next to the scale, and use a little bit of something to lean on. And look, instantly lose pounds. All right, there you have it. We'll see you next time. Thank you, and bon appetit. <laughs>